Brad Brown's got some Tuesday basketball for us. He's live from Mackey Arena on the Purdue campus. Hey, Brad. Mark and Amanda, the Pacers jerseys looking good. Purdue looking good here today as well. Let me tell you, this was just an unusual afternoon. The 3 p.m. Tuesday start time was probably the least unusual thing of all this. Of course, college basketball being played largely without fans all across the country this season. That will be the case here in West Lafayette. There were a few bodies in the stands. We'll discuss that here in a second. Purdue with their non-conference opener here at home against Oakland University coming down here from Michigan. We take a look inside here today, and it's kind of exactly what you saw here right now. Kind of quiet. The fact is, they're piping in some crowd noise in here, but it's just kind of a low roar that goes on all throughout the course of the game, and it's really strange. The team scores, there's no real roar to it, there's no booing, there's no real cheering to it. 13, 14,000 fans would have been here normally, but the empty bleachers broken up by a couple hundred or so cutouts of fans and characters, uh, folks making some donations to the university to get their pictures in here. They've got a lot of pets where the paint crew would normally be. I can't quite figure the whole thing out, but anyway, it looks like something going on here. Once the basketball gets going, though, it's just another game. It was close for the first 10 minutes or so. Purdue opened it up with some steady three-point shooting in the first half. Sasha Stefanovic had the hot hand. He knocked down six triples, led the Purdue scoring in the first half. Seven-foot-four freshman Zach Eady playing well again. His learning curve has been fast, and today he had 13 points and seven rebounds. Brandon Newman, the redshirt freshman from Valparaiso, was effective all day. The top scorer for Purdue with 21 points. Once they got settled in, a solid effort, 17-3. Made. They only made 16 twos, but that kind of day, Purdue rolls to the 93-50 win. A good first look here on the home court. Got to be ready to go um, from the jump on any any of these uh, non-conference games, and it's different with no fans and everything. You can't really rely on that for energy to get going right away. So, um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. You got to be ready, and um, we started uh, hot early with our shooting and kind of translated the rest of the game. This week we put a lot of a lot of time in um, for their zone, so I thought we were we were pretty prepared for it. Um, and like you said, our ball our ball movement was key tonight because um, we need to um, move the zone and, and get them moving. Couple more pre Big Ten tune-ups here at home. Purdue plays Valparaiso on Friday. They're scheduled to play Indiana State here on December 12th. The Big Ten home opener is on December 16th against Ohio State. IU continuing action in the semifinals of the Maui Invitational, relocated to Asheville, North Carolina. Hoosiers taking on Texas earlier this afternoon, and it was Trace Jackson Davis leading the Indiana scoring with 17 points in early and one. The problem is the rest of the team scored just 27 points. IU loses 66-44. IU plays at Florida State next week, the Big Ten ACC Challenge. And Bankers Life Fieldhouse has some big college basketball games going on this week. It includes tonight, Kentucky playing in the Champions Classic, and number one Gonzaga is going to play here a couple times, including a big game Saturday with number one and number two Gonzaga and Baylor. Time for another break. Back to wrap up the news at 6 next.